greet all the apostles, the prophets, the pastors in the church. Um, I'd like to greet you, Mom. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, I'd like to greet the leadership of the church. Um, I'd like to greet my mother, who is also in the congregation. Um, I think it's important that we honor um, our parents, as the Bible says. I'd like to greet the congregation um, at large, and I'd like to greet our special guests all the way from Blue Fontaine. Yeah. Amen. And um, last but not least, I'd like to honor my husband, um, who, when I came up with this and I said, babes, I think we need to take CFI to Siabusa, he said, 100% go for it. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. So, GK, I think, you know, those who might not know our faces because we don't come so often anymore, but for the Milanzi family, this is home. I grew up here, and I was married here. Our children um, were baptized here, and this is, this is our home. And so for us, this is a homecoming, and we've come to honor our late father, Bishop Kumsa, and our mom, uh, Mom Millicent Kumalo, we all know that honor is paramount. I don't know how often in the Bible it's mentioned that we should honor our elders. Um, they are doing such a great job, Mom. You are doing such a great job. And you deserve the honor and the respect that is due unto you. 
Um, and uh, the Bible speaks about how, you know, God loves widows and how he looks after them. But he also charges us and says, look after my widows and, you know, support them. And we are here and we are here to support you. We love you very much. Amen. We don't forget where we come from, just rising at the humble beginning. So, um, and what a better way to show your respect than to deal with a topic that you know is at the foundation of this congregation. I'm sitting here, I'm looking, faith, love, relationship, wow. It's the foundation of this house is family. It's love, relationship. And we would be remiss not to honor that and to speak about a topic that was so dear to our late father's heart. So we all know that when God wants to deliver an assignment, he uses a family. From Genesis, God used Adam and Eve. Throughout the Bible, we, you, we see God use families, Noah and his family, Abram and Sarah. When God wanted to build GK, the Lord, to enrich, restore, empower marriages, and ultimately, obviously, we know that if a husband and a wife are solid, the family is going to be solid the nation is going to be solid. When God wants to build a nation, he charges a husband and a wife. So it's not our platform as the Melanzis, so I don't want to take too much time, but we are so honored to have these great visionaries in our midst. As Muruti has lightly touched upon, they are global speakers yet so humble uh, we've had the opportunity to witness them speak in the uk last year where they were ministering to marriages they have couples who have testimonies in the uk of how they have touched and shaped and restored their marriages when the husband had left and they thought the marriage was over but through this couple they stand today as a firm foundation. They speak on platforms that, you know, sometimes when I think about it, I have goosebumps, but I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they are so humble, and um, I don't know if they understand the, the gravity of the spaces that they speak in, because just this week, they were speaking at Apostle Felix Ogos Church, with Apostle Grace Lubeka, with the likes of Ndogozo Mbambo singing, with the likes of Wusi Tembogayo. Um, they host an annual marriage conference in Sun City, and I'm inviting you, GK, all the couples in the house, all the singles wanting to get married, you need to be at Sun City on the 1st and the 2nd of December. And they have had speakers that are world-renowned, phenomenal speakers. Um, Pastor Soli Mashangu, Apostle S.C. Matebula. Uh, this year we have uh, um, Apostle Felix Oko, Prophet Yao. I mean, the list is that Dr. Dumi will be in the house. Um, you know, Buleng March will be in the house. So you don't want to miss it. Church, I, I plead with you, please, we have to see you in Sun City this year. Uh, book your ticket now. While we are here, um, please do not miss out on what the Lord is doing. A revival through CFI of winning families and marriages for the glory of Jesus Christ. This year, we're going to gather 4,000 married couples in Sun City. And you really want to see this because it's changing the world. So I want to hand over to you, Mom and Dad, um, or to hand over to you first. Okay, thank you. I will hand over to you, Mom Melissa, and thank you so much for having us. We love you. Well, I want you to show some light.
I really like to keep that Lucy love. That's why I'm saying here. Yeah. Is this like the best we can do? world-renowned speakers, they are on GKWC ground. This is the house of greatness, so we access and tap and access the grace. No, tap the sounds illegal, ne? So, born are we are receiving the grace. And I can like to hold on a I'm a teacher, right? So I want to see the couples that will be listening because nah, I'm going to sponsor our, yeah. this couple that will demonstrate to me what <laughs> they were listening so that they will be in Sun City wow. on the 1st and 2nd of December. Hallelujah. So I'm going to make that possible. I never make a pro. I am king. My word carries power. Yeah. And we'll make that happen. So you listen, you receive. Mm. And over one Baba Baizane, Baba Mechisem Baba Kaba Veta Tenho. GKWC, welcome, Dr. K. Mashishi and Pastor L. Holele for the first time in GKWC in Pumalanga. Hallelujah. Apple's Foundation International is received because the names of Pumalanga are born. Marriage revival is happening because the gates of Mpumalanga, where the sun comes, are open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You are welcome, Ruti. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Will we stand and then acknowledge um, the presence of God with us um, just by doing this that we pray for each other. Yeah. All right. Maybe somebody that is next to you is in pain. You don't know. Um, you don't know what has just transpired in their life. So what I'm going to ask is just for you to say something, something to God. Is that okay? On behalf of this person that you'll be holding. Let's pray for one another. Is that okay? And in that we acknowledge his presence here with us. We ask we have not because we ask not. May you be healed as we pray. May you be delivered as we pray. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. May you be made whole as we pray. Come on somebody. As we ask on your behalf, may you be able to receive it also. Is that alright? Shall we do it? Let, let us pray. Let us pray. Just find somebody. Touch somebody. Lift up your voice. Come on somebody. Just lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. We highly appreciate you, Lord. We highly appreciate you. We highly appreciate you. We highly appreciate you. We highly appreciate you. As we put my brother and my sister before you, we know that your hand is not too short to can rescue. Your ear is not too dull to can listen. Lord, have you not said it? Will you not do it? You are not a man that you should lie. Neither a son of man that you should repent, Lord. We highly appreciate you for the healing, for the deliverance. We highly appreciate you for putting our lives back together again, for going before us. And Come on, somebody shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In you we live, in you we move, in you we find our being. You are our priority. You are our number one. Wow. What a father you are. 
that you sent your only begotten son that them that believe in him they should not perish but they should have eternal life Lord thank you in Jesus name Holy Spirit we want to thank you for being here with us this is your service we yield to you mm. if you can if you can, you can pray in tongues. If you can, Rabu Kashita Namaza, Lekra Buki Kandi Namamos Tesiere Lakara. This is your service. Lakari Bebeni De Namosu Kushita Namasta Sam. Lebre Kira Babunda Namamasta Sam De Namaza. Kora Babandi Namamosta Sam. We circle this place with the fire of the Holy Spirit. We circle it with the blood of Jesus, and we lock this service up for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall not be any disturbance, O oh God. Receive all the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Glory be to God. Mama Kumalo, we salute you. Great woman of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And to all the teachers that are here, to all the pastors that are here, to all the evangelists that are here, um, to all the prophets in the house, to all the apostles that are here, to all the bishops, men of God that are here, we salute you. All the professionals that are here, lead us in your own right. We salute you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you just welcome them by a high five around you? Just welcome them by a high five. Just find somebody and give them a high five in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. amen and amen. We may be seated. Thank you so much. We highly appreciate it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Maybe you can help me here with the title, Repairing Family Foundations. Will you say that with me? Repairing Family Foundations. Yeah. Repairing Family Foundations. Um, we'll be standing at um, Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. When you see kids in the service, you know there are lovers in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Ah, glory be to God. Amen. 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 It's good. Thank you. It's good. It's good. It's good. You will see that um, in Genesis chapter 11, um, we are obviously looking at the life of Abraham or Abraham as he becomes Abraham. And um, it is important to look at his life because he's our father in faith. When you're talking about restoring family foundations, it is important that you go back um, to such like case studies. We will not kill you. We will not kill you. I believe that mama will not um, rebuke you also. Um, because there are people that would benefit from you, from taking out your cell phone and taking a clip of what is happening and sending to your friends. If you want to stream life, it is okay. We will not kill you. Is it okay? If you want to do that, because um, there's something about the age that we are in that reaches out to somebody that could not be able to come. But you are able to capture for them and go and send it to them. I tell you, this is life transforming because God is in it. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You will see that um, the life of Abraham, it runs from chapter 11 until um, that chapter 25. Chapter 11 to chapter 25. It runs from chapter to chapter. Mm. We don't have time. Hey. 
When you look at the start of a man's life and the end of a man's life, you realize I was not waste time. You're too quiet. We must not waste time because we don't know when the chapter 25 is coming. Amen. So I cannot engage in an argument with you, whether you're my uncle, my brother, my father. I cannot engage that because I don't know when your chapter 5 is coming, chapter 25 is coming. I can't, I can't engage it because I, I absolutely do not know. Um, I don't know when the chapter 25 is coming for my children. So I can't be beating them up instead of showing them the way of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I can't be arguing with my wife over whether socks were put or who's cooking today or because we are not in the entire control of what we are doing. Our times are not in our hands. And therefore it means we cannot walk sluggishly in the work of the Lord. We have to walk faster because why? Because that, that fast walk acknowledges this business is urgent. Yeah. It's an acknowledgement you're pressing forward quickly. It acknowledges that you are saying God is in charge. Yeah. You cannot um, hate your uncle for whatever crime he has committed against you. You'd have to quickly do it because once you reach 25... It means judgment day for you has come. Mm. You'd have to forgive your enemies quickly. Why? Because we don't know when 25 is coming. You'd have to let it go, let it drop quite quickly. Shake it off. Why? Because. Come on, son. Help me here. Yeah. It might take you very long to get to 25. But we don't know. All that we are praying for is that your life be elongated. But we don't grant that prayer. We depend on God to do it. So that is why when you are looking at people, the minute you remember them, the minute you remember your colleague, you must pray for them. You are driving in your car and you remember your child, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Why? Because we are thinking, ah, Lord, you are in control. I don't know why this thought is with me right now, but I, I please pass some grace. Lord, I plead mercy on behalf of this person. Amen. I cannot be hating my enemies forever. Yes. Not my boss forever. Yes. No matter what my boss has done, yes. I must let it go. Yes. Why? Because I'm going to face the judge of man mankind. Yes. Abraham lives yes. from chapter that whatever. But he's introduced at chapter 11. Quite an old man. We don't know how he grew up, but he's introduced as an elderly person. We don't know how he grew up. But when he's introduced, we see this. His father. Chapter 11 introduces us to Abraham's Maybe before we go further, just whisper to your neighbor a question and wait for the answer. Who is your father? Just ask your neighbor. If, if they are not answering, just wait for it again. Just, just ask them. Okay. Find somebody. Come on. Come just who just be looking father? at me now. Ask somebody who is your father by name. Who is your father? <laughs> Did they answer you? Well, Abraham's father or Abraham's father is Terah. T-E-R-A-H. Terah. And he worshipped other gods. It's explained by Joshua that he, the father of Abraham, worshipped other, other gods. <laughs> Why would we call God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and not start with Terah? Because there was something, a path Terah was walking that was not God's way. 
Ooh. Repairing what? Families? Foundation. Hmm. And Joshua says, forsake your foundations. Forsake them because they are not godly. Yeah. At the same time, when you forsake them, he does not say dishonor. Yeah. He says, make a choice who you are going to serve. Yeah. What path are you going to walk? Is it a holy path or an unrighteous path? Are you going back to your Sangoma or not? Choose who you will serve. Are you still going to consult the mediums? Are you still going to consult your friends instead of go back to prayer? Choose who you will serve. What will you do? Are you still going to, even when God has spoken to you, Listen to your wife, and when God comes, he kicks you out of the Garden of Eden. Because his voice spoke to you, but you never told her. Never told her. And, and, and rejected her advice on the basis of babes. God has spoken. Who will you serve? Will you ask your neighbor? Because the gospel we preach is for you to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Amen. That's what we do. Amen. That's what we do. That's what we are all about. We cannot go back and mix it. Yeah. Mm, we can't mix it. right? Yeah. We can't worship him and then consult somewhere else. Yeah. It's a full-time job that we do from Monday to Monday with passion. That's what we do. That's why they call us Christians. Yeah. Because he was not Christ on Sunday only. Yeah. Ah, come on, somebody. Yeah. If you are hearing this, will you just, I'm testing something. Will you just stand on your feet and shout, I hear the Lord. I hear the Lord. Now we are going somewhere. All right, you can be seated. We are introduced to Terah, the father of Abraham. Um, so if we are going to repair ah, if we are going to repair the family foundations if we are going to repair the family foundations the first thing that I've already said is don't waste time yeah. don't waste time Mwanakoha is applicable don't waste time don't, don't waste time um, in, in issues pertaining to your family move like this fast Amen. Don't waste time. In issues pertaining to God, move fast. Move fast. Yeah. Because the, 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 it is urgent. Yeah. That is how you begin to repair the family foundations. When God has spoken to you, don't waste time. Move fast. Do what he says because that could be your last obedience. You get it? And number two, if we are going to repair, ah, Lord, if we are going to repair the family foundations, let's honor them. Yeah. yeah despite what they have done. Yeah. Despite what names they have called you. Yeah. Ah, honor your parents. Somebody honor your parents. Yeah. Because this is, oh, this family issue yeah. is a test for you. Sure. Because it's given to you by God. Ah, we are we didn't appoint our parents did we Amen. it's a test it's a test of stewardship of authority you are given authority what are you going to do with it because if he gives you authority at this level and he carries authority at that level it's a test if you can't obey them probably your obedience to him will be minimal. Yeah. It's a test. And he says to you, he does not suggest it, he commands it. He says, honor your parents. Yeah. Number one, if you do it, I will elongate your life. It will be longer. Yeah. So if you want to die sooner, my goodness, disobey them. Yeah, disobey them. Dishonor them. You are only allowed to disobey 
when it's unrighteousness. Yeah. If it is not, it concerns dishes. It concerns you having to come over for a family meeting. Because we need you in the family meeting. You've got to obey them. Yeah. They are your parents when you are four. Yeah, they are your parents still when you are 12. They are your parents when you are 22. As long as they are alive. They are your parents when you are 40. Yeah. They are your parents still when you are 50 something. Amen. When they say to you, son, you say, father. Yeah. You don't say, ah. A man shall leave his father and mother. <laughs> and I am cleaving where I am. What are you talking about? You can dishonor your parents at an old age whilst they are still alive. Amen. You want to repair family foundations, honor them. Otherwise, it becomes a seed that you are sowing towards yourself, towards your children. Because you are going to be a parent also. They are looking at it, how you are behaving around your parents, and they are catching it. They are catching it. No matter what you say, they are catching what you are teaching them. Yeah. Ah, glory be to God. Amen. And if we are going to repair our family foundations, um, here it is. Um, saints, are you ready for it? Amen. We've, got to have, we've already talked about it. You've got to forsake Forsake it. Forsake what? Forsake the false gods of your family. Forsake them. You may you may come out of that family because you were you were not um, in charge. You may come out of it with with scars. You know scars. Um, that 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 you consulted with a sangoma scars. Ne. You may come out of there with those things that show that you have been there. With your finger clipped for whatever I don't know. They're still clipping fingers these days. Emma? Look, you, as long as you come out from somewhere where they were not serving God, I'm asking you, and I'm asking it in Jesus' name, forsake your family's traditions and worship. Yeah. That's when you say the buck stops with me. Yeah. That's when we can say now he's the God of Abraham. Thank yeah. you. Amen. We can now start saying Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Yeah. Not Terra and Abraham and Jacob. Because he was serving other gods. You want to repair family foundations? Do that. Will you tell your neighbor? <coughs> forsake false gods. Just, just tell your neighbor, forsake false gods. Mm. Forsake false gods. Um, come am telling you you've got to choose who you will serve if you are going to repair the family foundations and here is his story here is uh, you are going to have to all right, if you are writing, write this as number four. You're going to have to soar above the incidents that happen within your family. Soar above the incidents that happen in your family. The things that happen. Soar above them. Mm. Let me show you. In chapter 11, Ah, Lord. Ah, Jesus. Abraham. He gets three sons. Right? Um, it's Abraham. It's Abraham. It's who else? Are you in chapter 11? 
I thought we are together. If your neighbor does not have a Bible, just ask them, hey, Kanti, what's up with you? What's, what's going on? Oh, not a baby. How's not a baby? How come you have a baby? Who comes with a baby? Who comes with a baby? And it's about time that we share the Bibles that we have. Ne? Because we don't sometimes read them all, but you find some people in the church that does not have a Bible. You must give them the Bible. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are we at chapter 11? Right. Um, find, find in chapter 11. Tell me the sons. The sons of Terah. The sons of Terah. Abraham, all right, let's call him Abraham. Mm -hmm. Nahor and Haran. He has three sons. And what happens? All right. It says, Nahor. Is it, is it Nahor? Um, let, let me go there quickly. Let me go there quickly. Let me go there quickly so that I, I, don't, I don't take you... All right, let me go there quickly. Lord, take me there. Take me there. Take me there, Jesus. Take me there. Otherwise, I will open my Bible. Mm, that's, that's notes for you. That's notes for you. Yes, Lord, that's notes for you. Mm, that's notes for you. All right. Let, let, let me revert to this. Will you read for us? After that. Just after that. Um, after the three sons. Yes. Yes, Haran was the father of Lord. Yes, ma'am. Please read. That's right. The father, number one, as he is introduced, he loses his firstborn. Do you see it? That is why I am saying to you, Go back home and hug your family members than argue with them. Amen. Love them. Amen. Because you don't know who's going first. Amen. Do you hear this? Amen. I know they've done wrong. I know they slept away. What, what if they are left with one day? Are you going to punish them or are you going to love them? The Lord has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He did not give us that disciplinarian spirit that sometimes we walk with in our own families. Walking with, like, take up your sword when you get to the family. Who broke the window? Who broke the window? Why has the child fallen? Were you not taking care of the child? Why does the child have a scar on their face? It's a child. It's a child. Love the one who took care of the child. Because we don't know what will happen next. We don't know. The very one you might hate because of the scar on your child might be the one who's put five years to come to take care of you. Ah, we are restoring family foundations today. Will somebody rise on their feet and shout, I hear the Lord? I hear the Lord. I hear the Lord. Yeah. Uh, please read for us so that I, I just rush with time there. The first one, that incident that was unforeseen, boom, the firstborn passes on. Yes, ma'am. Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, mm. the land of his birth, mm. while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abraham and Nahor both married. The right, name. Right. The other versions say when he died, they got wives. It's like when he died, they got wives. That's how I read it. When the firstborn died, they got wives. I don't know if it was the pressure of the father. I don't know. But certain incidents happen in your family. The firstborn passes on. There's marriages. I don't know. I, I don't want to assume, but they got wives. And then, yes, ma'am.
the name of Abram's wife was mm -hmm. Sarai. Yes. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Yes. Milka and her sister Iska were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. Mm -hmm. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant. That's right. And had no mm. The brother passes on. They get wives. And then boom, we find out that one of their wives, which is Sarai, this time around, cannot bear kids. Look at what the father does. Yes, ma'am. One day, Terah took his son, Abram, his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, Abram's wife, and his grandson, Lot, his son, Haran's child. What, what did Terah do? He took his he son. Took. He's a father in authority. Um, Baba, I'm going to take you. Is that okay? Um, I'm, I'm just demonstrating it. She's seated where she's seated. She's doing what she's doing. As a father, when I come to her and I take her, it means she's forsaking what she was doing. She's following my authority. Do you get it? Yeah. They were taken yeah. by the father's authority. They were taken. Thank you, my darling. You, you, are, you are a lovely, lovely woman of God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. They were taken. The first one dies. Something must have happened to the emotions. And then you find out my, my, my other son's wife cannot bear kids. Uh, another incident that I'm saying, I'm asking you in Jesus' name. So above it. You've got to soar above that thing. Oh Lord, please, please, please open up our ears to hear. Because if you don't sow, you will take. And when you do this, you will commit mistakes. As he took, he left the other brother. As he took, he, who did he take? He took Abraham, he took Lot, and then he took mm -hmm, and left who? Now, now give me a reason why he would walk away from them. To never see them again. Ah, come on somebody. I hope that you see it. I hope that you see it in the scripture. Families are supposed to stick together. There's something that's supposed to be written there to show us he's not forsaking them. Let, let him at least bid him farewell. Let him at least say something. Nothing is said. He took, 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 and left. Never to come back to who? To his own son. Fathers leave. Men leave. That is why I ask you the question. Who's your father? When they are touched by emotions, when things start to happen around them, they leave. I'll give you certain reasons why men leave. I'll give it to you. Jeez. Men today leave because they are busy. They are busy. I'm busy. So he's upset. I'm busy. Ooh. I see you, brother. I see you. I see you. I see you. They leave because they are busy. I'm busy. It's just business. Um, men leave because of death. They die. Um, ah. Oh, Jesus. One doctor said, go into any street in South Africa and walk and check who died first. You'll find it's men. Yeah. Go into another street and walk there and find out who is it that passed on. It says men, they go first. According to what he was teaching and showing us, he said, they, they, they go first. Men are absent because they, they die. Okay? Um, men are absent because of the paternity denial. They leave. 
You've got to deal with it. You've got to deal with it. If the children are yours, they are yours. If they are not yours, they are not yours. But be a father. What are you going to do when that emotion hits you? They are lying. Are you going to leave? How do we know for real that it is ours? Is that your test? That is Men leave because of the doubt that they don't even um, communicate. They leave. You say, I. The child looks like a colored. I. I. And um, the worst thing, Mama Kumalo, is. Even their family members propitiate it. Yeah. They propel it forward. Amen. They say, I'll away. They are the ones that sow the division in the hearts of the men to leave and divide the families. Men leave because, Lord help me here, because of promiscuity, they chase other women. They get drunk and they chase other women. That's how strong um, a, a, a wandering eye will do to a family. That's, 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 that's how deep a wandering eye will, will, what? will go. That's what damage a wandering eye will do. A man that cannot keep his eye focused. All of the men, are you here? Are you here? All of the men, are you here? Look at my eyes, okay? I'm going to fix them on him and him only. Yeah. I am capable of doing this on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, on Sunday. Just because I've talked to myself to look at you and look at you only. Yeah. And then, yes, it is true. Sometimes as I walk away, I might see something. Yeah. But it does not necessarily mean I must follow it up. Right? Yeah. I must come back. Look at the menu. God says, please keep your eyes fixed on me. Yeah. Don't move them. Because the minute you move them, you're going to see stuff. Yeah. When your wife is talking to you, keep your eyes on the Lord. Because that's where you're going to find solutions. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Am I talking to you? Are you getting some help here? Yeah. Men leave because they've seen stuff. I mean, we are pulled by what we, what we see. True. You're going around and you hear, hey, did I see that? Wow, let me get the number. <laughs> you were worshipping on Sunday. Right? Yeah. I, I can get another man. You were worshipping on Sunday. It does not, that does not, what? It, it, it does not give you immunity to your eyes. These are gates. Something will go inside. That is why Job made a covenant with his eyes. Never to look at a woman lustfully. Never. He says, I will see them as my sisters. If I feel that it's going beyond that, Run away. I will see them as my sisters. But if it goes beyond that, because I will not look again. Because my eyes are giving me a problem. So he made a covenant with his, with his eyes. Men walk away. And I'm not saying these are the reasons why Abraham walked away or Abraham walked away. I'm saying men today, they walk too much. So when he is a little bit tipsy, He's okay. She can say whatever she wants to say. Ah. What does the Bible say? Do not be drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Every time you pick up a glass, just know this, you are stepping away from the Holy Spirit. Oh no, Pastor Holela, I, I take it with breakfast. 
I take it with breakfast. That's what I do. So it's just a glass. The it says it says the word says drunk. Why are you talking about drunk when I'm just not I'm not like them? But I I, I hate talking about this and in detail. But they walk away because of that thing. I'm not gonna explain alcohol. I refuse. I refuse. Just just I refuse to go into detail to explain this thing. But will you just stand on your feet and and, and just shake the, your neighbor's hand firmly and ask them, do you take someone? Just ask them for real, do you take someone? Do you take someone? Do you take someone? Just ask them. <laughs> Most of your mistakes are because of alcohol. Most of the families are broken because of it. Because you were tipsy, you were able to insult your father. Because you were tipsy, you were able to assault him. Because you were tipsy, you were able to go and read. Because you were tipsy. Ah, you placed yourself in a position to be ready. Am I saying it too hard? All that I am asking you, watch that thing. Watch that thing. Because it is. it looks like when you read the scripture, it's the opposite of the Holy Spirit. It's the opposite. You can't even... Where, where's the glass there, Madara? You can't even go to intercession with wine. You're not getting drunk, just 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 this much. And you go rabba kata Oh ba 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 ba. Yes, no. Ribo kotaraba. It's forbidden that you do that. Why would it be forbidden? Why does it clash with your spirit when you do it? There's gotta be something wrong. Gotta be something wrong. Men leave. Men leave. They are homes because of, ah, yeah, yeah, all right, I won't explain this one, but because of grant. Yeah, grant. So it's supposed to be the grant. Because of grant. I've seen, I've seen a man called by his wife, not back home. They had separated, but she was just asking for a child for grant purposes. She asked for pregnancy so that she can get a child, so that it can be paid. She does not want the man. She's just asking for, because you are my husband and we are separated, just give me a child. But, but stay your position so that I can get the money. Um, men, men, men leave because they are denied marital rights. I wrote it like that because we are in a Sunday service. You understand me? I cannot, I hope that you interpret it very properly. They, they walk away and there are many cases because conjugals. Conjugal rights. Lord, men walk away because of nagging. What is nagging? Hey,